Hi, my name is Dr. Tim Barker and today I'm joined by Dr. Zachary Munn and today we're going to be, be, be discussing the GRADE approach. Thanks Zach for joining me. My pleasure. Uh, my first question regarding GRADE is how long have guidelines been around for? The guidelines have been around for, for a long time. Um, um, uh, uh, medical societies have been producing guidelines um, uh, for, for a very long time. Um, but the way they have been developing guidelines has, has changed over time, of course. Uh, but yes, guidelines uh, have been around for quite some time. And uh, in their history, how have they been uh, created or generated? Well, so historically, uh, we often talk about the GOBSAT approach to developing guidelines. Uh, and this stands for good old boys sat around the table. So often it was the powerful people in a particular field or profession uh, who would um, debate and try to perhaps reach, reach consensus amongst themselves and perhaps even protect their own interests uh, in the way they formulated recommendations with maybe not much reference to the evidence whatsoever. So, so we, call, we call that the GOBSAT approach and it wasn't really evidence-based healthcare or evidence-based medicine, it was more eminence-based medicine in the way historically uh, at least guidelines were created. Now, uh, the GRADE Working Group have been created uh, to combat this uh, GOBSAT method. Would you mind telling us a bit about who the GRADE Working Group are? Yeah, sure. Before I get into that, I might, I might just talk about um, the alternatives, obviously, to the GOBSAT okay, approach. Right. All right. So the, GOB, so the GOBSAT approach obviously was, was this, a, a, a very heavy reliance on people's expertise and experience. Whereas uh, as a response to that, people started saying, actually, we need to consider the evidence and we should be considering the evidence, particularly high quality evidence in the way we form, form guidelines. And this, 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 is, this is fantastic. What happened though, is that a lot of different groups and a lot of different bodies started creating their own evidence ranking systems or, or, or systems uh, or, or hierarchies to move from research to actual recommendations, uh, uh, which, is, which is great because people were starting to take into account important things like the best available evidence, um, patient preferences, etc., etc. But it meant that all of these different societies and groups and guideline development organisations were using different systems, which made it a little bit difficult for people trying to apply these recommendations in practice because all of these systems, there was no standard. And then the grade group came along uh, and, and looked at all of these different, different uh, approaches and decided, well, what we need is we, we need one universal, transparent and sensible approach from moving from evidence to recommendations to rating our certainty or, or confidence uh, in the evidence and the results of research, particularly systematic reviews, and then using that to actually form trustworthy recommendations. So I'm glad you mentioned systematic reviews. Are you able to describe a bit more the uh, relationship between the GRADE approach and a systematic review? Yes, sure. So I, I think the, the, the grade approach is, is probably, uh, or applying the grade approach is probably one of the most important steps in the systematic review process because it ties the whole systematic review process together and presents the results uh, uh, using the grade approach um, in the systematic review and establishes certainty in those results. So when you use a grade approach and you've done a systematic review, one of the things that you create is what's called a grade summary of findings table or a grade evidence profile. And during this process, you consider key, key elements or, or important factors which might impact how much certainty you place in the results from your systematic review. So your systematic review is trying to answer a clinical question. And then you come up with your, your search of literature, you find your results, uh, and you'll report that per, per outcome. And then the grade approach considers, well, are the, are the studies contributing to this result, are they, are they good quality or are they at a low risk of bias? Uh, are, are all of the findings from the studies contributing to this result consistent or are they, they sort of reporting uh, very diverse results you know, that, that the intervention works or, or definitely doesn't work? Uh, so are, are the results actually consistent? They also consider are results applicable or, or, or uh, uh, could I directly apply them in, in my setting for my population as well? 
they also consider are these results perhaps at risk of publication bias? So actually are we including all of the evidence to inform our, our question as well? Uh, and as a final result, uh, is, it, is it a precise estimate or is there a lot of um, uncertainty, I guess, about the final result and, and a worry about its imprecision? So this is often judged by confidence intervals surrounding, surrounding a, a point estimate. And it's these factors along with a couple of others uh, that we consider when coming up with our grade uh, rating of, of certainty uh, uh, in, in the evidence. And, that's, and this, is, this is what you do obviously at the end of a systematic review and then you present your final results in a way that people can understand and also the grade rating of certainty which might be high, moderate, low or very low. So now that we've uh, rated the certainty of our evidence, how can we move that evidence uh, to recommendations? Great, great question. So, so we've, done, we've just done the systematic review part, so this, this is the evidence synthesizers and the systematic reviewers, they create these evidence profiles or summary of findings tables. And then the guideline panel or the guideline development group need to consider this evidence along with some other factors uh, to, to then move towards their recommendation. So they need to obviously um, weigh up the balance between the benefits and harms of a particular intervention or, or, or strategy. They also need to consider other things like um, um, uh, 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 resource use and costs of the intervention, um, the acceptability of the intervention or the strategy or recommendation, any impact on equity as well. Uh, so there's a whole range of things that are need to be considered uh, before you actually make your recommendation for your particular population. And what Grade recommend is that this is done in a very transparent process using what's called an evidence to decision framework, where for perhaps one of the first times in guideline development, groups have a very structured and transparent process to move from the evidence to the recommendation. Whereas in the past, this, this, this transfer from evidence to recommendation has been somewhat opaque and it's, it's hard to tell how a guideline panel actually move from this evidence to forming this particular recommendation. Now, do you have any advice or, or resources that you could uh, suggest to our viewers so they can uh, get started with the great approach? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So it can seem somewhat overwhelming when you first, first uh, if you're coming to grade for the first time, but actually, Grade approach is just a structured way to consider things you probably already know, know about or have discussed or learned about, like um, heterogeneity or inconsistency, imprecision, um, indirectness or, or applicability or transferability. So concepts that you've probably already learned about, but you're putting them all together. But a great place to start is obviously the Grade Working Group website, uh, which you can go on and, and check out. Uh, there is also a Grade Handbook, which you can follow. There are some online learning resources which you can find also at that website. And there's some software as well, GradePro, uh, for example, that helps uh, create these summary findings tables, evidence profiles, and evidence decision frameworks. Depending where you're located as, as well, regionally there are often there are grade centres, uh, which are, I guess, representatives um, of the grade working group or hubs of grade activity in particular jurisdictions or regions. So, for example, at JBI and here in Adelaide, South Australia, we have a JBI Adelaide Grade Centre, and there might be a Grade Centre uh, close to you as well. Okay, thank you very much, Zach. Thanks, Nick.